Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Gerard Gatch, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar on the topic of process characterization and validation for continuous chromatography systems. We're glad you joined us. This is one in a series of over 10 webinars on multi-column chromatography for applications in the production of protein therapies. Check out our complete series on the YMC Process Technologies YouTube channel. We understand you have limited time and came here to hear the content, so we'll forego formal introductions of our company until the end of the webinar. Just a few housekeeping notes and we'll commence with the presentation. Today's seminar is 20 to 25 minutes long, leaving plenty of time to answer questions you may have into the webinar. But this presentation outlines risk-based model-assisted process characterization approach for a twin column capture process. It will show how modeling can be used to significantly lower experimental burden of twin column capture process validation and find optimal process operating ranges. We invite you to explore our other webinars that cover these topics and more attributes of the entire multi-column YMC chromatography platform. These are 15 to 30 minute presentations by subject matter experts and available on our YouTube channel. So today's presentation will cover these topics. Capture SMB and how it works, process validation concept, and then we'll have time for a summary of what was presented and questions, your questions. About our presenter, Thomas Mueller Spath holds the position of CTO at YMC Chromacon based in Zurich, Switzerland. Thomas is the inventor of more than 10 patents and has authored and co-authored more than 30 scientific articles and book chapters on continuous chromatography for biopharmaceuticals. Thomas frequently presents at international conferences as speaker and also co-chairs workshops on continuous chromatography. Please welcome Thomas Mueller Spath. Thomas? Hello, welcome from my side also. Thank you for the very kind introduction, Gerard. Uh, and I'd like to start my presentation um, with an introduction to, quin to, to twin column technology. So what is Capture SMB, how does it work? And um, then lead over to how we validate this process. So Capture SMB is uh, the most simple and most robust multi-column configuration for the capture of uh, monoclonal antibodies or other uh, valuable therapeutics using affinity chromatography, using continuous chromatography. So the process is a cyclic process that um, also has a startup and a shutdown phase that is based on the overloading of a first column that is uh, loaded with affinity material that contains affinity material um, and the transfer of any breakthrough from the first column into the second column. So the antibody basically is saturating the first column that is filled with affinity resin, and then the breakthrough antibody is then transferred to into a second column um, by an interconnection um, uh, in, in the system. So then after the columns have been sequentially loaded, the first column is washed and the columns are disconnected and the first column then is eluted and cleaned and uh, uh, recalibrated while the other co column continues to be eluted. Then the columns take turn, uh, sorry, the other column continues to be loaded. Then the columns take turns, so then this uh, column that has been preloaded now continue to be loaded and the breakthrough again is captured on the second column, on the downstream column, and then this uh, other column here that has now been fully loaded is washed, eluded, and cleaned, while the other column continues to be loaded. Okay, so this is one cycle of the capture SMB process. It can go on forever until all the starting material is used. And uh, in order to get out of the process, we can run a shutdown process, a uh, shutdown step here, where just the partially loaded column is washed, eluded, and cleaned. So this process gives you 40 to 60% resin and buffer savings due to the overloading of the first column. And uh, it increases productivity typically by a factor of two to three. This is because we can use shorter columns and higher linear flow rates in, during the loading stage because we can afford having shallow breakthrough curves as we capture what's breaking through on the other column. Um, capture SMB is a counter-current capture uh, process that has 
of all the um, multi-column processes the least complexity, and this is an advantage when it comes to validation. Also, um, the design of the Capture SMB process is straightforward. The process can be designed from a breakthrough curve that is uh, recorded on a single column, and then we have a, a, a Capture SMB wizard design tool that helps you to transition from a single column breakthrough curve into the twin column Capture SMB process. And as you can see here already, these are uh, screenshots from the wizard. There are quite a number of operating parameters that need to be defined in the Capture SMB process. So this, of course, will have uh, implications for the process validation. Also, uh, we want to be able to operate Capture SMB with a UV-based dynamic process control. So uh, the process control works such that it actually records the breakthrough signal of antibody that's breaking through from the first column and then stops the loading once a certain threshold is reached in terms of area. So the area is, is integrated, the area under the breakthrough curve is integrated, and then the loading is stopped once a certain threshold is reached. So this, um, we, this feature, this UV-based control feature is called AutoMap. It can account for a column capacity decline, feed tighter variations, and buffer variations, and prevents a gradual decrease in product yield. Now, the way it works is that it has an in impact on the interconnected loading time. So whenever the columns are loaded in series and the threshold is reached, um, the UV-based control, it stops the interconnected loading. So we have, in addition to the different process parameters that we have in Capture SMB, also, uh, let's say, a software tool or an algorithm that in influences these uh, process parameters, namely the interconnected loading time, without user interaction. So also that needs to be considered in process validation. Um, so far, however, um, Capture SMB has a, an impressive track record when it comes to industrial implementation. So first of all, milestones reached include uh, that we have multi-purpose systems available for lab and GMP scale. We have demonstrated the scale up at numerous users uh, we have a, a UV-based dynamic process control concept available, as described before. We have done the virus clearance and carryover study uh, successfully, and uh, this will be part of another webinar, and it's shown there. Then we have developed this process and characterization, uh, process characterization and validation concept. All of these uh, um, points here are also published in, in peer-reviewed journals. So let's start with um, the process uh, validation concept. This basically, the following slides are uh, a summary of what is written in, in, in one of these papers here that has been um, co-authored by uh, a number of, of, of uh, well, authors from the industry and uh, academia. Um, as an introduction, um, Continuous manufacturing is embraced by regulatory, regulatory authorities, uh, saying that FDA is supporting continuous processing for pharmaceutical manufacturing because it offers quality advantages. It's consistent with FDA quality initiatives. And FDA also says in, in one of the guidelines that computer-based or virtual simulations of certain unit operations or dynamics can provide process understanding and help avoid problems at commercial scale. Okay, so with this, we see that FDA also supports essentially f more fundamental understanding uh, and uh, sees that as, uh, well, very helpful. And we would like to show you in the following um, now how we have used the, the modeling and the properties and the, the, the different um, features of uh, Capture SMB to come up with this characterization and validation concept. So that is now here consisting of five different steps. So we have a first a chromatographic process characterization where we det determine all process parameters and normal operating ranges. And then we determine process attributes and CQAs. 
So initially, uh, we need to know what does our process that we want to validate and characterize actually look like. So we have to analyze the steps and uh, list the steps. Well, usually we know these steps. We know the process parameters. So these are flow rates, loads, for example, uh, but also uh, washing volumes of and equilibration volumes of buffers, types of, of uh, buffers also. And we can take a lot of this information from single column batch chromatography, right? So we do not need to uh, analyze the, pro the process uh, like this on, at, in its capture SMB format, but we already know most of these parameters, and especially in terms of washing buffers and washing volumes from our single column uh, experience. And next, we need to determine process attributes, so yield productivity, and we will judge the capture SMB process uh, by the same uh, process attributes. So those are exactly the same. Also, CQAs, we have them in single column chromatography. We take just the same ones for capture SMB. So we will also have also protein contents, DNA contents. Uh, we will also, we want to determine the uh, normal operating ranges eventually as a subspace of the design space, which again is the subspace of the process characterization space. So initially we need to um, describe our process um, using um, process characterization experiments which can be carried out by using DOEs. And uh, a lot of uh, this work can be done already in using single column chromatography so that the experimental effort to do process characterization for capture SMB then is uh, reduced. And now there are a number of uh, specific parameters uh, or parameters specific to capture SMB. Uh, and these are listed here. So we have uh, an interconnected loading flow rate when the columns are loaded in series. And there's a duration associated to that. And this is the interconnected loading duration is what the UV-based controller is changing, right? So we've seen that the auto map stops the loading at a certain point. It doesn't change the flow rate. It stops the loading once it has reached this certain threshold. So this is where the controller comes into play. Uh, we have an interconnected washing flow rate. We have an interconnected washing duration. So after the columns are loaded in series, they're washed in series. And then we have a batch loading flow rate, which means the loading flow rates when the columns are in disconnected mode. And um, then also uh, we, have to go, we have to consider that actually the batch loading time is, is, is not a specific parameter or a parameter specific to capsule B because it's given by the sum of the times required for the different steps for recovery and regeneration. So it's not a process parameter by itself. So you see basically five extra parameters that uh, are specific to capture SMB, and that will make um, process uh, characteri characterization and validation a bit more uh, laborious. Okay, so these parameters um, may be potentially included in the next steps, which is the risk assessment. So risk assessment uh, you're very familiar with from the standard characterization and validation process uh, procedure. So um, the risk assessment is a team effort. It includes the uh, opinion of subject matter experts uh, based on experience. Uh, there are numerous tools available. We have uh, FMEA. FME, ACA, Ishikara, etc. So uh, the risk assessment then takes into account probability, severity, detectability of process parameter variations. And uh, it's typically shown in a, in a matrix where we are ranking now the impact of variations in um, these different uh, parameters that we have identified during process characterization. And uh, once we have um, uh, we have ranked these, these parameters, or we have assigned scores, sorry. We multiply a, a, a final score 
and with this we determine a, a parameter uh, rank. So we come up with uh, parameters that are of uh, low impact, medium impact, or, or high impact. And uh, high ranked uh, parameters then are um, tested in the design of experiments uh, fashion. So you see also in this matrix now we have the loading flow rate included, the interconnected state time is included. So due to the additional parameters that we have in Capture SMB, you can imagine that the matrix size is larger than in single column chromatography. But the way it's the risk assessment is done and also the way the DOE then is set up is the same as in single column chromatography. Okay, so using the risk assessment matrix, we came up with the ranking of process parameters, and then in the next steps, we do a design of experiments to test the high-ranked parameters within the design space. So now we can come up with a uh, DOE uh, matrix. So there's numerous uh, ways how to get to this uh, DOE matrix. There are uh, there's software out there that is that is uh, especially made for uh, coming up with these with these matrices, like Jump, for example, and um, large companies also have uh, mathematics uh, statisticians who are very um, uh, experienced in, in uh, setting up these these kind of matrices. So. Um, the size of this DOE matrix increases with the number of columns, obviously. So in the capture assembly process, we have more columns than in batch chromatography. So we also have um, process parameters such as bed height and bed height difference between the two columns that can play a role here and that can increase the size of the DOE matrix. Um, so if, let's say, a typical DOE matrix in single column chromatography has 25 experiments in capture SMB, it would have roughly 75. Um, the more columns you have, the more, um, the larger the size of the DOE matrix gets uh, as a trend. Now, in order to still um, come up with a reasonable number of experiments, um, we uh, have investigated ways how to reduce the size of this DOE matrix. And one way is to do chromatography modeling and simulation. So now we know also that FDA is very supportive of this. So um, this is uh, certainly a way that we can proceed. So um, now here comes the, um, the, the, let's say, the academic part of, of the validation. Uh, procedure, which is optional. So you can go that way, um, but you don't have to. So this, um, this part involves the mechanistic modeling of the protein A adsorption. So here you have the, the equations. They represent equations for mass balance, mass transfer, and uh, uh, isotherm, so the adsorption process of antibody inside a resin particle. So we assume that the antibody is diffusing inside the resin particle from the outside to the inside, saturating the particle layer by layer, essentially, and then uh, le so leading to a shrinking core, which is free of, of antibody inside the particle. So this uh, actually this me mechanism has already been shown by, uh, by some microscopy. So electron mi microscopy with fluorescent antibody can be used to show that actually in resin particles, this is really the way how in, uh, the, the particles get saturated. So there's also a scientific basis, uh, definitely an even experimental confirmation for this uh, kind of behavior uh, of, the, of the antibody inside the protein A particle. Okay, so with this uh, model, and we can uh, do simulations, mathematical simulations, and also have a look at um, the inside of, of the columns. So here we see um, the actual profile of antibody in two columns over the whole length of the two columns in series, each column being 10 centimeters. So with this, 
we can actually, with the model, we can actually visualize what an internal profile inside these two columns in series would look like. This, of course, is not accessible uh, experimentally. This is a pure simulation, and it can help us a lot to understand how the columns are saturated and how uh, the, the process works and also how the process can be optimized. So we can optimize this process now, for example, for maximum productivity and maximum load. Now we can also use this process now to uh, simulate the Capture SMB process inside its design space. So for example, we can simulate uh, an array of Capture SMB experiments for various interconnected loading times and interconnected loading flow rates. So we want to use the model to predict process attributes like yield and productivity, and we, we can do that. So um, with this model-assisted process validation, then, we can basically identify points in this operating or in this design space or in the characterization space, actually, more um, that do have a low yield and therefore are not worth running experimentally because we know that they would be outside the design space anyway. So with this, we can basically, with this model, we can then simulate all the experiments of the DOE matrix and uh, remove experiments which we know would give us, a, 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 which uh, we know would give a low yield, which wouldn't be non-attractive. So no one would run and uh, do an experiment with, let's say, 40% yield, right? So we know that also our design space later on would not stretch in that direction. And with this, we can reduce the number of experiments um, to a reasonable or to a lower number. That, and we can go from this around 75 experiments to around 25 experiments, as we've had previously in batch chromatography. So 77 to 22, more precisely, um, showing that size of DOE can be, the DOE matrix can be significantly reduced using uh, modeling. OK, then um, once we have boiled down our uh, DOE matrix, we actually have to run the experiments and do statistical analysis, because what the uh, a model cannot predict uh, reliably is uh, the, are the CQAs. So we still need experimental verification of the product quality. So currently, there's no good model for host cell protein or DNA um, prediction or, or modeling. So that has to be really experimentally confirmed. So we can do that. Um, this is um, showing uh, like a, the, the, the process attribute results actually for various the simulated process attribute uh, values uh, for the various process parameters here. And then um, once we have these results and confirmed the CQAs, we can start our statistical uh, analysis and identify the critical process parameters, right? So the critical process parameters are the ones that we need to control very tightly. So within our design space, there may be a narrower range where we want to maintain, where we want to keep our process parameters. Also, this DOE and, and, and uh, results and um, yeah, the, the modeling can give us uh, valuable insights into the sensitivity of the, of the parameters uh, generally. OK, and also, uh, lastly, the modeling can also help to identify the borders for our controller. So we want to make sure our controller is only operating within a certain defined uh, design space. So also in the software of the UV-based controller, we can uh, change the set points such that the controller will stay within inside the design space and will deliver certain uh, process parameters. Uh, sorry, pr certain process attributes. OK, so summarizing the process characterization and validation concept, um, this is what you've seen in the, the, the previous slides that we're, we're separating the different stages of the process. 
So we have our standard approach here that we can use to do process validation, and this would include um, testing high rank parameters using a regular DOE and doing all the experiments. So that's the traditional approach that is that you know from single column chromatography that is available also here. Now, in case you want to use the power of mathematical modeling, you can think of coming up with a mechanistic model, uh, the, tuning the model, doing optimization, and then uh, verifying experimentally selected operating points to then do your statistical analysis and come up with, a, uh, find the CPPs, critical process parameters. Then also you can think of running a, a hybrid approach where you do not optimize the capture SMB process, but you just reduce the, um, the DOE matrix by striking out the experiments that will have an inferior uh, process performance. So these two approaches can be combined. In the end, they will lead to the same goal, which is um, defining the critical process parameter ranges and modifying the normal uh, operating ranges if necessary to come up with this uh, final normal operating range for the critical process parameters. And again, for more reading, um, please refer to um, biotechnology, bioengineering, to the paper where this procedure is explained in much greater detail. With this, I'd like to um, conclude the presentation, and I will be available for a few questions after a few closing remarks by Gerard, our moderator. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, that's excellent insights into uh, to DOE and validation methodology. This presentation was sponsored by YMC Corporation. Since 1980, YMC has been a leader in chromatography, producing bench and prep scale, HPLC and LPLC systems, packing resins, and columns. YMC is a global company with manufacturing and offices in over 10 countries. Just a reminder that other aspects of this topic are covered in focused webinars that are available on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search on YMC Process Technology. Okay, I'd like to bring back Thomas now for the Q&A. And Thomas, we do have a, a number of good questions. Um, let me start off with, um, would validation of other uh, multi-column systems, non-two-column systems follow the same risk assessment? Yeah, so the answer is in general, yes. So the process, the process or the procedure I, I outlined is also applicable to other multi-column process. It's just that um, the size of the DOE matrix would certainly increase because there are a larger number of process parameters. Thank you. Next question, can you explain more why low yield points are excluded from experimental verification through DOE? Yeah, so um, the low yield points are basically not worth running because uh, as mentioned, the designs or they would deliver such bad process performance that they would be unattractive to run in and then, in, uh, let's say, in, in the scale-up. So we would be losing too much material, um, and um, yeah, so we would, don't, we would simply not want to move in that, in that direction. Okay, logical. Um, next question, how much time should I expect to spend on validation in comparison to my standard batch process? Yeah, so we've seen that the, for capture SMB that the size of the DOE matrix was approximately three times as large as the one of batch chromatography. But uh, so in, in capture SMB, we have the advantage that we can run multiple experiments in one go, essentially in one run. So uh, let, me, let me explain a bit more. So we can run the capture SMB process to a first steady state which refers to a first set of operating parameters. And then we can program uh, the system such that it directly runs a second set of operating parameters in the same run. So it reaches a new steady state. And with the samples we take, 
we get the values for that new um, set of operating parameters. So within one run, we can screen multiple um, operating parameters. So effectively, despite the three times larger size of the DOE matrix, we may end up with um, a similar duration for the DOE experiments because we can run the uh, system 24-7 instead of, uh, let's say, eight hours uh, per day. Um, of course, single column chromatography can be also automated. But um, I would say um, the, there may be some time savings which uh, do not um, which reduce the, the, the time effort of, of capture SMB. Very good. Uh, next question has a little bit of a setup to it. Um, in continuous process, there might be variations such as different sample concentration or dropped in binding capa drop in binding capacity of used resin. Uh, the loading time will change. Hence, how does the wizard help to coordinate the change of phases in order to control the process? Okay, so um, the wizard first is uh, programming the the system or the, the capture SMB process based on based on time, so based on fixed time. Then the UV based control can learn based on the first cycle that the capture SMB process is running um, where to stop the the loading, right? So that's uh, this this information is acquired during the first cycle of the capture SMB process. Um, it can be also set to a predefined value so that it monitors the, the breakthrough of antibody. And once the predefined value is reached, um, then it stops the interconnected loading. So for the UV-based control, there's this first automatic mode or a second mode where we can enter a predefined threshold uh, value. Where the, you, uh, where the controller should stop. Excellent. Um, next question, good question. Um, how do you consider resin manufacturing variability, porosity and ligand variability in the model used for modeling the chromatography method? Um, yeah, so that's, that's really a, a very good question. Um, so of course the the resin parameters have to be dis determined in, or the model parameters have to be determined experimentally. So um, the best way, of course, is to, to get an idea of the variation by actually repeating the uh, parameters determination uh, procedure for this model, also for different materials, uh, let's say from different uh, lots or let's say different resin age to get an idea of how sensitive the model is to those uh, those, those changes. To some extent, um, you can you can then derive uh, correlations. Let's say that would um, uh, allow you to to, to um, change model parameters based, let's say, on the on this on this on the cycle number of. Um, the resin on the age of the resin, for example. So, um, so far, um, I see this as, as the best option. So to really um, to get experimental uh, data um, to from different resin uh, batches uh, or resin lots, sorry, to determine uh, these correlations for for resin aging. Good. Um so two questions, I'll ask, ask the first one and then I'll take a breath and uh, you can address the second one. The first question, uh, besides having less columns, what is the advantage of this system as compared to other systems in the market, such as Acta PCC, Bio SMB or Simba Octave? Okay, so um, yeah, so the fewer columns or is an advantage by itself because it means that there's less complexity in the system. Questions regarding uh, validation, not only process validation, but also uh, virus validation, cleaning validation, um, become much easier to answer when you have uh, fewer columns. Um, so also, the mechanically, um, the, there's an advantage that you have fewer hardware components that can 
that can deteriorate or, or break down, so there's also less, less risk of, of failure. Um, then um, this uh, system also, there are software features which are um, basically uh, giving advantages here. Um, also, um, I, I also count the automap UV-based control to this. So the UV-based control is very flexible because in a two-column system, when the columns are loaded in interconnected mode, there's no parallel operation, which means no cleaning, equilibration, or uh, illusion going on in parallel while the two columns are loaded. So the controller can have full flexibility with respect to when it wants to change the, um, or when it wants to stop the interconnected loading. So in other processes with more columns, the two columns, once they're done with loading, and the UV-based controller wants to switch to the next steps, may actually have to wait until something else, uh, recovery and regeneration, is completed. So apart from the advantages with regard to hardware and validation, there's also um, operational advantages uh, which have uh, show, showed that uh, lead to greater flexibility of the capture SMB process and system. Okay, I've got an eye on the time and, and I'm gonna take, uh, I think, two more questions. We do have a lot more of them. We will answer those in, in writing, uh, but uh, let's go into the lightning round here and maybe I can slip in three if you can um, have abbreviated uh, answers for uh, the breakthrough curve. Is it generated using the system or do we need an ACTA in order to generate the data? Uh, both is possible. So you can import the breakthrough curve uh, from Excel, from another system. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, the breakthrough curve will typically be uh, coming from offline analytical data. So um, you can run the breakthrough curve on the cube or on an ECTA, then take the uh, offline analytical data, import your Excel table into the wizard, and then design the process. Okay, how does the UV base control account for high culture fluid background versus low UV of the MAB target? Yeah, so um, for this we have some special flow cells and uh, inside the system, so we use 0.5 um, millimeter uh, path length flow cells and uh, we also can run uh, use higher wavelengths, so we can have a 300 nanometer wavelength um, on the system so we can be still in the linear range of the UV uh, detector. In addition um, to, the, to the UV, um, we have to say that um, the process, so typically uh, with antibodies, uh, we have antibody concentrations larger than uh, one or 1 1.5 gram per liter which is, to our experience, the threshold, or let's say the value where the UV-based con control becomes uh, uh, or operates well. So we, there may be difficulties for perfusion processes. There it's, let's say, probably it, it would still work. But uh, if the titer is going below 0.5 gram per liter, it gets very difficult. So in that case, we would have to rely on time-based, um, let's say, definition of the capture SMB process with sufficient safety margin. So when we cannot see a UV signal of the product, we have to operate this way with safety margins and fixed uh, times. And the final question, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. Um, uh, it could be an open-ended, uh, but if you can get 30 seconds, how do you define a batch? Yeah, so um, just very quickly, I see I'm taking too much time to answer. <laughs> I can define it by based on time, based on volume, based on mass. Uh, so uh, the FDA is giving us a lot of freedom here how we define this. Uh, if used in conjunction with fat batch uh, fermentation, then it's very easy. Then the batch can be linked directly uh, to, the, to the fermenter. Very good. Uh, 
Thank you, Thomas. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, thanks for the time you devoted to answering the questions. We'll follow up with any questions uh, that did not get answered uh, in writing. I'd like to thank the audience for your participation. For those of you who have immediate application or uh, questions or would like a copy of the slides, contact us at info at ymcpt.com. That's info at ymcpt.com. Again, you'll be receiving a link to an archived version of this presentation and a link to associated reference documents. Please share these uh, with your colleagues who uh, couldn't attend today. And a reminder, this is one in a series of webinars, all of which you can find uh, on the YouTube uh, site. I think you'll find a lot of other interesting um, uh, material uh, on this topic. So uh, thank you very much. We'll end our session now and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.